Hi, and welcome to the next part of CS50 Finance. Today we are going to work on the history section, which is a pretty short and easy page to implement. So let's first read what we, should, we are supposed to do. Complete implementation of history in such a way that it displays an HTML table summarizing all of a user's transactions ever, listing row by row each and every buy and every sell. For each row, make clear whether a stock was bought or sold and include the stock symbol, the purchase or sale price, the number of shares bought or sold and the date and time at which the transaction occurred. You might need to alter the table you created for buy or supplement it with an additional table. Try to minimize redundancies. Since we took a look at every requirement for a table property in one of the previous videos, we don't actually need to alter our table now. So everything we should do is just extract the information that we need and display it in this history page. So this is what the table should look like. We should have a column for the symbol, then the shares. Notice that when we have sold something, we actually have a negative number then the price of each stock and the date and time when the transaction was made. Now I have actually added another column with a header of type and I have explicitly written the type because I think it's actually more intuitive for the user. But of course, if you want to, you can make it in this version. So let's come here and see what we have to do. Now for this part, we don't actually want to check the method. And as you can see, we don't have the methods listed here. Why? Well, because the only method we are going to use is get. We don't have a post option here. There is no form that we can submit. We only want to be able to see the transactions that have already been made. So we can just come here and first extract all of the transactions from our transactions table, right? So let's come here and say transactions equals db execute and now we want to select the type the symbol the price the shares and the time from our table so from transactions which is the name of the table where the user ID equals um, a question mark. And now something that I actually missed is to get the value of our user ID. So what we can do is we can come here above the transactions line and say user ID equals session. And now inside of the bracket, we need to write the name of the key. So user ID. So go to session and give me, go to session and give me the value of this user ID key. And once we have stored it inside of this variable, we can actually add it here. So the question mark um, is uh, just in order to prevent from injection tax. And now I can come here and say user ID. So this, the value of this variable is what's going to be here. Okay. And once we have this, we actually want to render our template, which we haven't created yet, but we will. Um, let's first say return render template and now we want to write a name of the template which is going to be history.html then we want to pass in some um, some arguments so um, what we want to pass in is the transactions because here we can access the type the symbol the price etc so come here and say transactions equals transactions so again this is the name of the variable which is going to be sent into our template and this is the name of the variable we have used here so these two have too much but this can be different if you want to set another name we can just say something else but i'm going to keep it the same just because i think transactions is short and at the same time descriptive enough and the other thing i would like to pass um i think let me just check that yeah, so since we want to print the price, we are also going to need the USD function, right? So recall that USD function is here 
um, let me just find it, there we go, inside of our help, helper's pi file, it has already been given to us and we just want to use it. And again, we don't have to pass it into the HTML, but since I started using that in the beginning, I just want to be consistent, so I'm going to say USD equals USD. And again, this name could be different. We can call it USD function or convert into USD or whatever we want. But this thing here has to match the name of the function here into our helper's pie. Okay, so once we have this, we can now go on to the template. So let me come here and create a new template. So new file, which is going to be called history HTML. All right, so I think I'm going to use the template from the index HTML because it has a table while the others don't and we need another table here in history HTML. So um, let's call this um, my transactions or something like that. Yeah, so the table is striped again. Here we're going to have symbol now, in this case, we don't need a total, so I can remove this. We also need a type. And we don't actually see the name of the product, so I'm going to change this to type. Then we do need the shares, the price, and we also want to know the time of the transaction. So let's go here and say pH time. Okay. Now let's go on to the T body. Now instead of having stock and stocks, which were the variables that we used uh, in index in the index page, now we want to use transactions, right? Because that's what we have called our variable. There you go, transactions equals transactions. So let's come here and say for transaction in transactions. We want to print transaction symbol and we want to print it into uppercase upper like this then we want transaction type then transaction so here we have shares then the usd function is going to be the same and we need a price and here we want to remove the usd function and print transaction time. Okay, and also I have to change the stock to transaction again. Okay, so again, this USD function is already declared in uh, in helper spy, and now we're just using it into the HTML since we have passed it in here, and we say and we are saying take the price and convert it into USD. So just format it the way it's supposed to look. Okay, so this should be the end of the four. We don't want this because we don't need it. We just want to close the body. And we also don't need a T foot anymore. So this should be our templates. Let's start our app again, just so we are sure that everything's fine. So flask run. Oh, I misspelled it. Flask run. There we go. Let's open it. Register. So I'm going to use three, 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 something random. It doesn't really matter. I'm going to use a new profile just to check if everything's fine. So log in now. There we go. Let's buy something. I'm going to buy six shares. Oh, sorry, Apple is the symbol. And I'm going to buy six shares. Then I'm going to buy two shares of Tesla. Two shares. And... Let's say I'm going to sell two shares of Apple now. I want to be left with four, so two shares. Okay, this works. Now let's come here to the history part. And again, we can see the symbol, the type, which I have added explicitly, even though it's not present here in the original website, but I think it, it provides the user with a better user experience. And then we have the shares, the price, and the time the transaction was made. So this was everything for this part of my tutorial of how you can implement CS50 Finance. If you have any questions, 
You can put them in the comment section or you can message me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, etc. Next time we're going to implement some of these features and we're going to fix some uh, small bugs that occur. But now, since we're done with the main part of the problem, let's actually run check 50 to see if everything works as expected. So let me come here, copy this. Let me open a new terminal. So um, we want to say CD Finance. That's the folder that we use. And let's see if everything's okay. So as we can see, all of our tests are successful. So this was the main part of the problem. Of course, there are some small details to work on. But for now, I think this is enough or at least enough to pass the tests. So I'm going to see you next time and I hope this video was helpful.